Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Dan Pierce, and I'm one of the founders of Mentally Fit, and we'll get right into it. Today, we are talking with Dr. Brooke Gilbertson. She is a therapist in private practice, an addiction recovery expert, and she is the clinical director at One Method Center, an addiction recovery program in Los Angeles, California, providing a holistic approach to addiction recovery. Today, Dr. Brooke will be talking with us about treating the whole person in addiction recovery from brain to behavior. So with that said, we'll jump right in. Dr. Brooke, thank you so much for joining us today. All right, thank you for the warm welcome, Dan. Thanks for having me on. Um, I hope everybody has been doing well in uh, this pandemic and it's good to have a virtual connection with you all. <laughs> um, so today I wanna talk a little bit about integrated care just the importance of, uh, you know, really working with in such good communication with not only, you know, medical, psychiatric, psychological care, but really treating the whole person, just like Dan said. Um, so let's jump right into it. Um, first, I want to preface, preface this with, you know, why integrative medicine and integrated care is so kind of personal to me. Um, in 2015, I actually was diagnosed with a, a health condition myself, and um, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor, and it was a very massive surgery and big process. And so I was, you know, on the other side of it, I was the patient um, receiving such great integrated care. And to me, knowing that the doctors and the medical team and the, you know, even the psychologists and, and everybody that was working together with me was so in communication uh, just made me feel like very cared for. And now, you know, being the clinical director and working um, on the clinical side, treating patients, seeing, you know, how effective it can be. That's why it's really kind of personal to me. And I wanted to talk about that. So um, thanks for listening to my, my spiel. Um, so what is integrated care? Um, it's an approach to care that seeks to integrate the best of Western medicine, good science, but also kind of meets Eastern medicine, which is so important as well as complementary and supplemental treatments. Um, it's an approach to care that seeks to under integrate the best of Western science with a broader understanding of the nature of disease, mental illness, addiction, healing, and wellness. Um, it is also the uh, most widely recognized uh, premier standard for effective treatment particularly when we're talking about addiction medicine. Um, so integrated, the patient and practitioner partners in the healing process. Um, we as therapists know the importance of building a therapeutic alliance. It's so key for interventions to be effective. I mean, we could use the most gold standard evidence-based treatments, but without that trust and without the collaboration, really seeking to understand what that patient wants, you know, it's not going to be effective. So that collaborative process is so key. Um, good medicines based in good science and integrative care is very inquiry driven. So let's being like, you know, being very curious, um, wanting to talk with the patient, um, being open to new models of care so we can really provide a tailored individualized uh, set of treatment. Um, one of my favorite sayings to, to tell clients that I meet are, you know, you're the expert on you. Let's work together and I hope you're open to trusting this process. If we collaborate, I can best help you. So really with integrated care, all factors that influence the health, wellness and disease are taken into consideration, not just one aspect. We're not just treating the symptoms or the behaviors. We're looking at the whole person and really developing a comprehensive um, system in place that's going to be full wraparound care. All right. So holistic, I mean, just it's kind of in the word, but addressing the whole person, you know, we want to take a look at the physical ailments. Um, that includes medical situations. Of course, we have to rule out the medical uh, components and treat that. Um, emotional, mental, taking a look at their social environment, their family relationships, um, what does their environment look like when they leave residential treatment and return home? Um, and lastly, spiritual. Okay. So from the medical perspective, 
Um, I think it's just, you know, this really is kind of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We really have to ensure that we're, we're treating and ruling out all general medical concerns. Um, because without that being addressed, you know, the therapeutic and kind of psychological um, components really won't um, be able to stick because this will always take the forefront. So I want to just kind of go back to um, complementary modalities. We're talking like from a holistic perspective too. Let's see. Um, we also need to incorporate physical uh, health. You know, one thing that One Method Center really focuses on, it kind of sets our treatment center out from others, is that we have a strong emphasis on health and fitness. So we, our director of health and fitness will meet with each one of our clients and really develop a robust program. Um, the philosophy is kind of move a muscle and change your thoughts. You know, when a client is feeling better physically, well, they're gonna be able to do more intense uh, and difficult, you know, emotional and, and psychological work. So this is really something that I've found to be super important. Um, you know, you think about the body, it's in a recalibration phase and so is the mental state. So is your emotional state and, you know, getting this physical component and health and exercise really on track um, really can kickstart this whole process. And the other thing too is, you know, oftentimes when clients will come in at their lowest point, um, essentially they're most broken or depressed and kind of, you know, been down in the dumps. Um, really being able to exercise, sometimes that's the only source of organic uh, joy they can muster up through, you know, building endorphins and such. So um, really incorporating the physical component is, is key too. Um, from an emotional standpoint, um, I mean, we as therapists, we know that building that therapeutic alliance, um, allowing the client to feel safe, to start to build trust um, is going to be really paramount. So this is a, definitely a part of, uh, you know, something we consider when we're talking about integrated care. Um, from the mental standpoint, one of my uh, specialties, one, what I really love uh, providing group therapy sessions on is the neuroscience of addiction. Um, when we really understand kind of what's going on mentally and, and, and physically as well and biologically in our brains, it helps uh, clients and also their families understand that, you know, the disease of addiction is not just about choice. Um, I like to use the hand model when we're talking about the neuroscience of addiction. Um, like, so if my, my thumb here would be the midbrain and my fingers would be kind of the frontal cortex uh, a lot of times family members will say, oh my gosh, you know, uh, Johnny, why can't you, you know, make better choices? Well, they're talking about the frontal cortex here. This is where we make rational judgment, you know, choice, thinking. But when addiction is active, it's like your frontal cortex goes offline and our midbrain, our, our limbic system and our amygdala, it's really running the show. And it's kind of like it's in fight or flight mode. So that term where your frontal cortex is actually not in full communication uh, with your, the rest of your brain, that's called hypofrontality. So I think a big piece of you know, treating somebody who's in recovery is really educating the family, educating them so they can understand that, you know, one, this is not just about choice, and two, it removes a lot of the shame, which I think is important to go back to the emotional and um, like building that therapeutic alliance and understanding. Okay. Let's see. And for social. So, I mean, the importance of building a community in recovery is so paramount. Um, you know, one thing that is really important to address when you're meeting a client is really, like I said, be inquisitive, you know, be really curious. Let's find out you know, are there certain relationships that you might need to break? Um, what's your social network look like? Um, is living in that same environment safe for you to return back to? Um, getting plugged into a program, whether that's a 12-step program or some other like refuge recovery or some other type of program where you're going to be connected with people, have a sense of belonging um, is so key. Um, there's this TED talk uh, by Johan Hari, and the last phrase he says in that video 
um, is that the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection. So that's really resonated with me. And when people can come and feel connected, feel like they can be themselves and be accepted for who they are um, and not shamed or judged, but really just get vulnerable and have empathy. Um, it's just a profound thing. And it's really wonderful to watch. Okay. Um, environmental. I mean, this is really kind of where uh, case management has a chance to shine. Um, Oftentimes, uh, here at, at the treatment center I work at, at One Method Center, we assign a, you know, a designated therapist, but also a case manager. And they're really able to kind of say, okay, now what, um, where are you living? With whom are you living? You know, what kind of associations um, are in your world that you might have, that might be big triggers to relapse? What kind of barriers and safeguards do we need to put in place? Um prior to you being ready to return back to that environment, or if we need to kind of uproot that environment and, you know, start from scratch. Um, really doing a deep dive into what are the triggers, um, not just external triggers like people, places, and things, but also internal triggers, meaning what emotions, you know, um, are that might cause you for, you know, triggers to relapse or triggers to even, you know, just depressive symptoms or um, old personality traits. All right. Um, and spiritual. So uh, as far as spiritual goes, you know, this is really kind of where East meets West. Um, Western medicine might say, okay, you have a symptom, let's treat the symptom. Now, with the spirituality component, I mean, I'm firm, a firm believer that it's so key in order for, for real growth and profound like healing to take place. Um, Buddha said the quote, just as a candle cannot burn without fire, we cannot live without a spiritual life. Especially with the busyness of today, um, everything is so on demand and we want everything at our fingertips, instant gratification. It's just so important to be emotionally connected with ourselves. Um, it's in the stillness uh, and ability to sit with ourselves where I think real, uh, our soul is really able to pl come play with us and have that interplay. Um, it's very tempting to seek external things and people perhaps even to validate us. But I truly believe um, the only way out is in. And so, you know, oftentimes just being able to zoom in and, you know, connect to your spirituality um, is just so key for, for real healing to take place. Okay. And um, to sum it up, uh, as therapists, you know, we have a special honor and privilege when a person comes to us seeking help. We've probably been, all been called to this uh, field with purpose. Um, most often for a personal desire or history, perhaps, or, or simply with a curiosity to become the best version of ourselves, um, or perhaps because we have a deep desire to understand others and in turn understand ourselves. Uh, whenever I meet a patient, I take a very holistic approach, um, viewing them from this lens treating the mind, the body, and the spirit, it leads to a much more comprehensive understanding um, where better treatment and integrated care can take place. Uh, the way I lead my clinical team is through collaboration with one another. Um, we use a lot of teamwork. Uh, we rely on one another and close communication with the medical team, the health and fitness department, the nutritionist, the RA staff, the neurologist, and you name whatever pr practitioner that individual client needs in their treatment. Um, a bonus is when you have an awesome work family that you really love being part of the team. Um, I'm lucky and grateful to say I do, and I work with the best. So that's super helpful. Um, if you're interested in learning more about One Method Center and what we've been getting up to, please check out our website at uh, methodtreatment.com. And I'm also in private practice, so you can visit drbrook.com as well. Um, Socrates said, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. I believe true healing and getting to the root is the birthplace of profound change and creation. So that's all I have. Um, I'd like to open it up if anybody has any questions.
Excellent. Dr. Brooke, thank you so much uh, for sharing your time and all of your knowledge with us today. Uh, we do have a couple questions here and just pulling that up right now. One of them is, uh, are there any podcasts um, that you recommend for therapists to stay up to date on the latest uh, tools and techniques in addiction recovery? Hmm. Podcasts, not off the top of my head, but there's some great videos um, on YouTube. You can find them on YouTube, but from Complex Care, it's really helped me kind of understand uh, different modalities in a very comprehensive and kind of easy to understand way. Excellent. Thank you. We'll include a link to that in the show notes. Um, who are the addiction recovery experts and educators that you like to follow? Um, well, personally, I really love Dr. Gary Fisher. He's been such a, an important mentor in my life. Um, uh, let's see. Dr. Kevin McCauley, he's from this uh, documentary called Pleasure Unwoven. Um, he's also uh, very knowledgeable and makes it palatable for um, for clients, but really for families as well. That's a big resource I've turned to. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and I get, last question here would be, um, what are the issues that you see as on the rise when it comes to addiction recovery? Are you seeing um, more addiction as a result of COVID-19 and all of the related lockdowns? Um, more screen addiction. Uh, what are the trends that you're seeing right now in the industry and with yeah. addiction? Good question and very relevant too. You know, I think with everybody being so kind of feeling disconnected, I mean, thank goodness for technology because, you know, I imagine like, um, you know, in a pandemic without being able to really talk to people or interface such as, you know, how we are right now, um, how lonely that would be. But even despite, I think that there's this kind of uh, just presence of loneliness that everyone's feeling. And like I said about connection, you know, when we feel really disconnected, the human mind, our brains are wired for connection. So we're going to reach out for, you know, things that are going to make us feel bonded. That might be a substance. Um, that might be a cross addiction with a behavioral uh, addiction. Um, maybe jumping into unhealthy relationships or um, online shopping. I know personally, I've been clicking Amazon a little bit more <laughs> lately than normal. Um, but cross addiction is another one. And you brought up the technology addiction. You know, I think we all kind of like have this extension as, uh, you know, we're all kind of staring at our phones constantly. Um, and it really makes us feel so disconnected because we're not interfacing, you know, human to human and having that interaction in person as much. Mm -hmm. um, and then in, additionally, too, you know, even if you're not an addict, um, a lot of uh, just people probably globally are, are turning to alcohol a lot more frequently just because they can work from home and why not? They can. And so I'm hearing a lot about that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we actually have a couple of questions uh, from someone in the audience. Do you have time uh, for that? Sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So uh, can you talk a little bit about family addiction recovery and uh, how that plays into the addiction recovery process, how the family plays into it? Yeah, well, as families know, you know, if you have a loved one who has been suffering with addiction, it doesn't just affect um, the addict, you know, it affects the whole family. Um, really, you know, we always encourage Al-Anon, um, Families, Anonymous, uh, Families Anonymous is a really good resource as well for parents who are suffering with uh, their loved one, their, their son or daughter um, with addiction. Um, I find that to be a little more helpful when it comes to, um, like, say, for example, like Al-Anon is great for a spouse, a partner, and for children as well, or maybe a parent. But if you're a parent, um, Families Anonymous is really kind of a special place. Um, so you can learn how to better hold boundaries with your son or daughter. Um, and, you know, it just affects the whole family. So a big part of what... Um, a comprehensive treatment uh, facility will, will likely do is, you know, loop in the families for family sessions because, you know, you got to learn how to um, communicate differently, how to, um, you know, just approach the client, let go of rage and anger, really understand addiction. Um, 
what's going on and just better tools to communicate. Um, one of the programs that we use um, is called the BALM program, B-A-L-M, and it stands for how to be a loving mirror. And that really kind of sums up the program. It's a, it's a wonderful resource um, for, you know, knowing how to understand how to communicate, how to hold boundaries, how to, you know, really process your own feelings as well um, and get the support you need um, when, you know, you're dealing with somebody that you love who's suffering with addiction. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. It's often said uh, that the person that's suffering from the addiction is the identified patient, if you will, um, that tends to represent that the, the whole family as a system can be supported so that the person can recover, but the family can also recover. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's so important for everybody really to get the support and the help that they need. Um, like I said, it's not just the, the one who's suffering with addiction, but you know, there's a, a big ripple effect. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, the last question we have up here is in regards to virtual care. Um, as I'm sure you know, a lot of things have gone online and um, there's a lot more support available for people virtually these days. Mm -hmm. How do you think virtual care will play a part in addiction treatment and recovery support? Yeah, well, that's a tricky question because, um, yes, it's more accessible. Um, however, you do lose some of the, I think, important uh what's lost in the room, all the nonverbal cues and just the energy that you can sense in person. Um, I'm a proponent for telehealth, um, telemedicine. It's, it's very, you know, accessible. Like I said, it can be kind of on demand, um, you know, but I think ideally if you can have a hybrid, that's, that's probably most ideal. Um, as it comes to addiction medicine, you know, it would depend on how acute uh, the client is, um, you know, really getting the wraparound care, um, this integrated model, like we've been talking about, um, making sure that they're, you know, physically uh, safe. I think that's going to be really key depending on how acute the case is. Excellent. Thank you. Well, Dr. Brooke, thanks again uh, for joining us today. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And to everyone watching, uh, thank you so much for joining this conversation. Definitely check out Dr. Brooks' website at drbrook.com and the One Method Treatment Center website at methodtreatment.com. Both incredible resources. And yeah, thanks so much for coming. We'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Oh, oh, oh.